Got to make absolutely certain I don't get any echo. So I am going to, uh, yeah. We are live, everybody. Welcome. And um, this is a great day. This is the eve of the 2020 NFL draft, the first virtual draft in NFL history. And I'm very proud to introduce my new friend and guest. He is Nardabek Tapilov of the great pro source sports organization. He is an NFL agent, NFL certified agent, who represents John Francois. How are you doing, Beck? Doing great. Thank you for having me, Abraham. You, you, de you definitely. Oh, by the way, I was going to say, uh, Beck, um, my, my real name is Xenophon Artis Abraham. <laughs> Xenophon, okay. Yeah, yeah. So my first name is Greek. My last name is Jewish, and I'm not exactly either, although I have participated in a number of Passover Sadars. So I like I, it. Original, man. It's original. I love it. Only, only in America, right? <laughs> That's correct. God bless America, no doubt. Absolutely. Hey, tell us about your great list of uh, clients and your stable uh, before we talk about Mr. Francois. Uh, currently in the league or 20, talking about 2020 draft? Uh, both. 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 Um, I represent a Super Bowl champ, center for Kansas City Chiefs, Austin Ryder. Then a cornerback for Philadelphia Eagles, Craig James. And a linebacker for the Tennessee Titans, Nigel Harris. And with that, that's NFL. I have a couple players in CFL, but this is NFL primarily. Uh, and in, in 2020 draft, I represent quarterback DeAndre Francois from Hampton. I represent center Jordan Johnson. From the University of Central Florida. I also represent DJ Davis, the running back from Southern Illinois University. Wow. You're quite busy. That's, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I, I love to stay busy. Absolutely. I love it. I love what they do. Hey, let's talk about uh, Mr. Uh, Francois. And he's an amazing player. And I remember him at Florida State. And uh, I, um, oh, excuse me for a second. I'm, I'm, uh, and, Talk to me about now in the draft and his preparation. And where where are he how far has he come from your view? To me, it looks like he's come a long way. Although uh I mean he's an impressive person. You know, he's he's grown into an impressive person. Undoubtedly harm losing you, sir. Honestly. Uh, but where is he now? Well, when I talk to people, um, people say, oh, DeAndre Francois, he turned the corner and he's doing great now. And, you know, I listen to those comments and I say in return, yes, yes, but he's been, he's been always great. He's been always uh, uh, a good person, never, never had any... Uh, I never had any concerns about him. Uh, I respect the guy as a as a player, as a person. Uh, he's always done well in whatever he did and whatever he's doing. Uh, any goal he put in front of him, he was, he's able to reach it. So uh, that he's an incredible person, amazing person. Uh, to be honest, uh, going uh, leaving FSU. And going down to uh, Hampton University has been a definitely an uh, uh, experience for DeAndre, no doubt. Uh, I'd say humbled him a lot. Mm. Uh, I'd say he, uh, you know, he, the things he, he had at Florida State, he, he didn't have that at Hampton. In, I'm sorry, i breaking up, sir. I can't hear you like that. Hello, hello, hello. I'm hello. still here. I'm still here. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's still here. It's just weird that way. If you just go through the buffer, we'll we'll make it. It's like, it it, it does that sometimes. It does it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So not, as long as you can hear me, that's fine. So, I can hear. Um, the sound yeah. is consistent. Yeah, your sound is sound consistent. consistent. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so just, same yeah. same things here at Florida State, for example, gourmet meal plan. Uh, co uh, supporting supporting staff, 
uh, his own apartment. He didn't have that at Hampton. So definitely experience going to Hampton definitely humbled him a lot. And he didn't lose his head. He didn't go sideways. He stuck to his point. He uh, did what he was asked to do by coaches at Hampton. Uh, he played his best. He was a great leader. He was a great teammate. So um, to me, again, when people say, oh, he turned corner, he turned corner. Yes, maybe from that perspective where uh, he goes to Hampton, that's totally different experience, not a major D1 school. Uh, from that experience, yes, but overall, he's a great person, uh, has an awesome personality, uh, loves kids. Uh, I have four kids, and then they love him. You know, uh, the, my, my boys always talk to him. My daughters can't wait to see him so they can joke around and play with him. So uh, he's a great kid. I mean, I, I love and I respect DeAndre, and, uh, you know, I want him to great, of course. And for the record, for those, so somebody who may be inclined to write something that's wrong, uh, he was exonerated from that matter. It was found that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the person who was once his girlfriend made a made a video, a fake video about him. Yes, from from what from from what media states, that's correct. Of course, you and I weren't there, but from what we see, uh, from what media states, that's exactly what happened. And uh, from what from what I read, uh, she uh, she took everything pretty much. She uh, she admitted to her uh, to her mistake as far as that. See, she uh, she made the whole thing up, or she wow. set him up. To me. I think it was more like a jealousy factor to me, just relationship, which went rogue pretty much um, could have happened to anybody, uh, just didn't work out, toxic relationship. Uh, but if you ask DeAndre about her, he would never speak one negative person about, about this person, about his ex-girlfriend. He's always, uh, he's a gentleman, he's respectful, he always says, no, she's a nice girl, it's just relationship didn't work out and I'm ready to move forward. Good for him. Good for him. That's yes. that's 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 huge. Hey, it's so a let's special talk, person, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about his attributes. This is a true dual threat quarterback. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, he's um, he reminds me of if 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 you ask for a, to a comparison, he reminds me of uh, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, uh, some of Dak Prescott. Uh, I believe he has that uh, that level of playing that, that that he's a top of quarterback. DeAndre is an elite quarterback. Uh, number one, he never lost a battle to be a starter ever since he started playing football. Uh, that's the only position he ever played, quarterback. So he never lost that battle, even in high school, Olympia or IMG or Florida State, Hampton, you name it. So to me, he's an elite quarterback with one of the best arms in this draft, uh, hands down. So, and, uh, you know, I, I wish uh, I want for NFL teams to recognize that and see that. So, and remember that. So I'm, I'm sure they know that, but I want them to recognize that fact that that's very important. Him having a, one of the best arms, no doubt about that. How about his uh, ability to run in a way he reads blocks, I think, exceptionally well, even for a, a court, even better than some running backs, right? And so what it, makes a great quarterback? Let's ask that. What, may, what makes a great quarterback? Anticipation. Yes. It's a, its ability to see the future and react to it. Mm -hmm. So DeAndre is gifted with with that very key anticipation factor, where he anticipates and he he's he's a pocket thrower. I never see him to be a runner first and a thrower next. No, he's a thrower first, mm -hmm. and he's always has it in his pocket if he has to take off. And, and use his feet and run, he will do so. But to me, he's a thrower first, and then he's a runner. You see a bunch of quarterbacks, they, 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 uh, they panic inside the pocket, they just, take, they just take off and they're gone, you know? Uh, DeAndre doesn't panic, he scans the field, he's got a great peripheral vision, he scans the field, he makes the throw, if it's not there, then he goes to plan B. Yeah, and I, I should explain, I was thinking more about how he can play in a scheme that calls for a great passer and a great runner. And it's difficult to find quarterbacks who can do both well. Oh, I agree. I agree. I know. I, I, I exactly. I mean, I understood what you asked. I'm just yeah, yeah, clarifying yeah. on uh, what's for him, what's first for him, what's second. So absolutely. I agree with you. He's a, he's a dual threat quarterback. No doubt about that. 
And I, but it's a passing league. It's a passing league. So to me, he's a pro style guy first, you know, before read and run. So to me, he's a pro style quarterback, but definitely dual threat. No doubt about that. And I was also thinking that Lamar Jackson's paved the way for some of his talents more so than before Lamar, Lamar Jackson hit the NFL, right? What yeah. do you think about that? I totally agree with you. Uh, one of the quarterbacks, uh, I'd say before Lamar, Russell Wilson. If you remember his first year, mm-hmm. his first first two years, he was passer yes. and runner, both. Sometimes runner first and passer second, so it all depends. So uh, actually, to me, Russell Wilson kind of paved the way, and Lamar Jackson kind of took off from there and, uh, and doing it now. And if you look at Russell Wilson now, he kind of more, he, he comes down, he's more like a pocket passer, he has more patience, anticipation. But when it comes to uh, who is doing it now on the next level is Lamar Jackson. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. And see, to me, uh, Mr. Francois is in that area. I mean, I can see him uh, being that effective for some team. Uh, I agree. I mean, he's yeah. DeAndre. DeAndre's got a bunch of weapons in his pocket. So, I mean, he's, he's you know, he's a, as I said, he's a unique quarterback. I've seen him throw life. I, I was uh, in Honolulu with him during the hula ball. Uh, where, of course, a bunch of other talented quarterbacks were invited. You can just tell DeAndre is a natural thrower, natural thrower, and um, he definitely jumps out the page, jumps off the page. I mean, nothing against other talented quarterbacks, but DeAndre is special when it comes to that. Hey, so how are you going to handle the draft this time around? Because there's no um, – we're all, we're all sheltered in place, so to speak. Right. Yes, this is a this is a one one a lifetime unique situation. <laughs> I would call it. You know, it's it's never never experienced nothing like that. Even uh, uh, being born in a different country, never seen that before. What's going on right now in the world? But uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, this this draft going to be very unique. Uh, I I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Actually, see how it starts at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time and um, see how they're going to see how they organize the whole thing. So I'm, I'm curious to see. I think it's mostly going to be uh, Roger Goodell going to be in his room or in, in his house receiving a call or message and uh, then then announcing it on TV and stuff like that. GMs or coaches going to be in their own places, in their own rooms or homes or apartments. So I think that's how it's going to go. That, yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, but, but it's like no media. I mean, I'm not there. I I I, I, did, I should have checked the NFL website. In fact, I will while I'm, I'm I'm talking to you to see if they've sent anything for us because I you know I we built our own little and I'd love for you to come. We have our own little online portal at Oakland okay. now, and uh, we've we're gonna have we're gonna be talking about the draft and everything and as it unfolds and uh, handing out some prizes and so on. Okay. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. But, you know, I thought, hey, you know, the NFL didn't build us a room or anything. And I was a big advocate of using something called Second Life, where you actually sort of walk into this animated, you know, NFL draft, like you're, you're like this avatar, right? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, they didn't, I don't have anything like that. Uh, the latest news on the NFL media website is the 2020 NFL draft club by club selections. Uh, the 2020 NFL draft slots, uh, a viewer's guide to the 2020 NFL draft, uh, and um, that's it. You know, there's there's nothing else. So um, there's nothing else. So um, it's weird because I I thought that it's the draft. It's supposed to be something big, right? But yeah. this kind of seems like we're not we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely uh, it's going to be very interesting to see tomorrow. How the first round goes, uh, just just, just all yep. experience. I'm looking forward to Friday, Saturday, of course. See see how that goes. Uh, uh, I don't hear uh, when you turn the news. I don't hear any more terms like, "Oh, this this team prepared. Their war room is ready." There's no more war room. You know, uh, there's no bunch of scouts and coaches get it up together. Right. So it's it's, it's no longer like I, I guess everybody's gonna have his own his or her own war room wherever they're at. So hey, they're I, gonna they're gonna take over the draft. I gotta ask you. You and I were both in Miami for the Super Bowl. However, I didn't have a press pass for the game. I stayed up until Saturday night. How did you like Miami? 
Miami is well. I, well, I live in Florida. I'm from Orlando, so I live oh, in okay. Orlando, Florida. So I'm only hours away from Miami, three and a half hours away from Miami. I actually, oh. Deand- DeAndre was born in Miami. FYI, I uh, want to mention that. So DeAndre was born in Miami. Uh, I loved, uh, you know, I enjoyed Miami. I enjoyed Super Bowl. wasn't one of them. Was an amazing experience. His dream come true for me. That's always been my dream. When I um, fell in love with the sport of American football and uh, became NFL certified agent. Always was that your my dream first Super Bowl? Huh? That's my that's my first Super Bowl. I experienced it live. I mean, I've seen, of course, I watched it before, but being in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. being being, uh, being, yeah. being part of this, but then then going down the field after my team won, my center won, and uh, my center became a Super Bowl a champion. That was that was an awesome experience. So definitely, I, nothing I will, you know, I'll, I'll treasure that forever. So that was definitely awesome for me. So, hey, uh. Next time you go down there, go to the 11th Street Diner owned by my friend Raisin Schnitzen on 11th and Washington on South Beach. Open 24 hours. I'll be happy to. Just uh, make when sure we get text, out of this thing. Text me, text me the details of it again. Text me the detail address, and I'll definitely stop by, and I'll definitely visit the place. I love nice, uh, authentic food places, definitely. And I want That's to have fun. you back, and we talk about the Chiefs and the upcoming season. If, if what, what not, uh, Do you think there's going to be a season? Uh from what I think, uh, I think not having a season is definitely going to be uh, detrimental to the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what they may do, they still they, they may still have a season, but without any fans, which is wow. tough because, you know, the sport based on fans and uh, fans is a big part of the, of the sport. Yeah. So uh, it's, 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 it's crucial, but sometimes that during the, during this desperate desperate measures we got to do what we got to do uh i think football is still going to happen i think it's just going to be players sponsors mm-hmm. uh and and that's it no no fans i think um nfl is going to be there i think division one going to be there i'm not i'm not sure about division one double a mm-hmm. because they don't have uh that my tv money the tv mm-hmm. money is not that much for division one double a's versus Division One schools. So uh, I think Division One NFL uh, going to happen without, unfortunately, without fan base. So, and we'll see how 2021 going to be. But I I just hope by this time next year, pandemic is going to be over. I hope. I I'm hope really so, too. Hoping and praying for it. Yeah, and I hope the government been, gets its bailout act together, too. <laughs> it's, it's been, wow. yeah, it's been, it's a total bailout, a totally different subject I don't want to get into. But yeah, I, I see. Yeah. I see your point, but uh, definitely, you know, uh, I, I, I hope and pray for the sake and health of, of our nation that we're done with pandemic uh, by, by this time next year it's because it's been very tough on everybody. It's been tough on my players. I mean, my players missed pro days. Mm-hmm. They didn't have pro days. You know, that, that's, that's, that, that was huge for them. That's, that's, their, that's their job interview. Yep. And we don't yep. have that. Yeah, we did virtual pro days. Oh, you, yeah, you, that's what's going. Yeah, yeah, wow. We did virtual pro days. We send it to the teams. We talk to the teams, but it's still it's not the same. Right. Pro day is a pro day. Uh, player gets to display his skill set, talk to scouts, talk to GMs, or uh, have a you know have a have an interview, have interviews, and uh, it just unfortunately didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen for DeAndre either. You know, DeAndre actually one of the few luckiest one I consider because he was invited to Gridiron Showcase in Texas where he um, displayed his uh, skills and also got, he got to uh, uh, meet with a bunch of uh, scouts from NFL teams, NFL scouts, and uh, it was a three-day event. And right after that, he was invited to a hula ball in Honolulu, all-star ball, which, which was amazing. It was an honor to be there for him. And uh, there also he was able to uh, display his skill set and also meet with NFL scouts. So I think, you know, that was definitely huge for him. But missing a pro day, also missing an HBCU NFL combine mm-hmm. was, was very sad. I mean, it was, was unexpected for him. Hey, he worked so hard. He worked very, very hard this, this entire, this, this off season to be ready for pro day and HBCU, in, in, in HBCU NFL combine, which was the first one ever in the history of the league to host HBCU NFL wow. combine. And he was invited. He's one of three quarterbacks who was invited then. Unfortunately, which teams like, show the most interest in him? Well, I uh, I'd rather not jinx it. I'm a superstitious person, but uh, just definitely want to mention we did have uh, definitely quite a few interests. 
quite a few teams contacting us, calling us, uh, getting some information. Um, we have a, we're, we're having it now, and also we had it during a hula ball, you know, during a gridiron showcase. So uh, I don't see DeAndre not having an interest because this, the quarterback he is, the caliber quarterback he is, whichever team decides to draft him or sign DeAndre is going to get a great value in yeah. him, period. Great value, no doubt about that. So you can just you can avoid a quarterback of his statue. He's a great quarterback, and I think he's going to be a superstar in the league if he's given a chance to do so. Oh, uh, awesome! Hey, on that note, uh, stick around. I'm going to close out, but I want to thank you publicly. But don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Everybody, we'll be back later tonight. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. It. Stick around. Thank you. Stick around. <laughs>